There we go. Greetings and salutations, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to there Roll Hit. Greetings and salutations, oh, wait a ladies minute. and gentlemen. Welcome to there Roll Hit. Greetings and salutations, oh, wait a ladies minute. and gentlemen. Welcome to Roll Hit. Greetings. There we go. Sorry about that. For some reason, it <laughs> unmuted uh, Twice. Uh, the, the Twitch channel. Three times. Oh, yeah. Well, I would have kept on going if I hadn't turned it off. So I apologize for that, ladies and gents. Uh, so anyway, greetings and salutations. Welcome to Roll Hit Die Presents Rhyme of the Frost Mating. Maiden. Um, our DM for tonight's game is Marcus Scott, but before we hand it off to Marcus, I would like to do a continual shout out to Roll20 for their easy to use, uh, maps that we, you know, pop up here on the screen so our players as well as our viewers can see the action that's involved in whatever combat or, um, other fun things we end up getting ourselves mixed up into. Most of miniatures, I believe at this point in time, all of ours have been used, uh, created going through the Hero Forge subscription. Oh, and I did not play the commercial. All but Wampus. Yes, Wampus, is the, only, like. uh, Wampus is the only one I have not created a miniature in Hero Forge for. Uh, but also our sponsors, usually for our Friday Night Games, which we're waiting on Chapter 4 to come out so we can jump back into that is Gooey Cube, and um, during break tonight, I will play the commercial for the first chapter of the Red Star Rising campaign. If my players will be so kind as to remind me of that fact, I would appreciate it. Your uh, players? <laughs> yes, you're all my players, whether I'm running the game or not. I will... I would say I'll remind you, but we all know I'll forget. So be it. Anyway... Thanks for joining us tonight, and uh, without further ado, I will pass the baton over to Marcus. Hello, everybody. I am Marcus Scott. I will be running this group through Rhyme of the Frost Mating, according to Dan. Uh, that's what it sounded like you said. Yeah, that's, Anyways. That's, uh, yeah that's why I paused and stopped for a second and corrected myself. Uh, so... Apparently, this is going to be a PG-13 or higher rating later on, I guess. Well, I'm just, maybe I'm just Always. thinking about the fact that all those Yetis need to do it again to get more babies so that our, you know, rogue can they just can go slaughter kill them. them. Yeah, so our rogue can just slaughter them again. Oh, I don't know if it's the rogue that killed them time? most. Yeah, or if it was our cleric By the time you get to a certain most. point, you know, some of these uh, experience points are negligible. So. so wait a minute. Killing Yeti is bad. Stringing up girl we're rescuing. It's still fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, like I said, I'm be running them through Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Uh, this is slightly homebrew, so if you're looking for uh, cheats or secret DM information on that. Uh, you'll have to read the book because I'm not going to follow it. Just because these guys don't like plot hooks or anything like that. They like pretty glowing trees and going walking over there instead. Because those are plot uh, hooks. No. Nah. They are plot hooks, just not the plot hooks you wanted us to follow at the time. Look at yes. these pretty things. I prefer those pretty things. Hey, look, there's a big lich that you need to find and kill. Shopping! Hey, <laughs> Three episodes. It's very important to get the yes. items that we need to kill said lich. Not one city, but two. If you keep it up, it's going to be free, sir. Hey, I see there's this city right here. I know Barrymore's yeah. over there. Yeah. No, 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 you gotta go. So if we have any uh, blossoming... DMs watching us. I know you watch the videos and stuff like that, and they always say DM should prep two, three hours worth of time. When you get a party like this, just wing it. That's all you can do. Well, let, hold on. <laughs> if we're going to give advice to people who might be new DMs out there, learn your players and adjust accordingly. Not just wing it. You learn your players and adjust accordingly. Oh, apparently I attract the same freaking type of players. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 35 years, I attract the same freaking players. Don't Is worry about... Is that 
more on you. Don't worry really. about it because apparently so do I. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's why I'm not DMing right now. <laughs> uh, so now that we've completely gone off the rails already and the show hasn't even started yet, uh, let's go ahead and introduce our characters for tonight. Uh, so Tara, let us know who you'll be playing tonight. Uh, my name is Tara. I am playing uh, Lorena Moonflower, no, also known as Kilrayan. Um, and uh, she's just happy to know that uh, her lady love is safe and is ready to go kill some of these big old worms, I guess. Ew. Ew. Ew? She's not into worms in general. So. Mm. Only the ones at the bottom of the bottle. Mm, she doesn't even eat those. There's a joke about no worm by the mouth, but it's early. So. Okay. <laughs> so we'll kick it over to the other side of me. Kurt. Hello, my name is Curtis Ross. Tonight I am playing Typhloid, the Leonin monk, also known as Iopatos, but he doesn't tell anyone that except for these few that he has around himself at this point. Mm. Oh, Danny boy. Yes, that'd be me. I am Dan Latham, also known as Shadow Degar and a lot of social uh, media. And I am playing probably the only character in the group that doesn't have another name. Uh, but my name is Largal uh, Stoneclaw, and I am the resident bard. Uh, also, of course, I'm the Goliath who's walking around with a baby yeti on his shoulder named wampus and as you can see we do have a camera set up for our fourth player who has recently had a newborn child so his availability a little shaky right now which is fine we'll save his spot yeah. but uh he plays a warforged druid named tobias uh, well, well, his his name is actually two B one A S, but people call him Tobias. See, I, apparently, I'm the only character without a different name. Okay, it's a nickname. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and who will be running two B one seven niner? I can. Tobias. I've got the spells and everything pulled up. I mean, oh. Druid's your second language, right? Seems to be. Sort of. All right. Now that we got our characters out of the way, let's bring our viewers up to par on where y'all been so far. Everywhere. Who would like to earn a GUI reward? Well, you want everything? It might take a minute. But I can tell you what we did last session. Just the clear right there. Notes. <laughs> last session, we gathered and took the tusk from the mammoth, and then we took the kids back. And as we got back to the boat, we're like, hey, light off in the distance. So we went and looked at the light. The light turned out to be the light. speaker's home away from home. After talking to the guards and telling them about the assassinations and yada yada, um, we just walked to town and beat the boat across the lake so we then helped to get our tusks and everything out of the boat took the kids the kids ran towards their mother and then it was just like hey yeah no these are your kids they're safe and sound nothing's bad everything's fine you know we then proceeded to store our stuff toby stayed with the cart or not the carts the sleds or he went to the inn doesn't really matter then we went and talked to the speaker um i skipped a whole lot of notes there um we told him the kids were back in town and that the mother and with her mother and that the wolves were only doing what they did because the mammoth was kind of forcing them to and bullying them into it. So we told him that we killed the mammoth and basically the wolves were happy to stay on their side of the lake if they stayed on their side of the lake. So as long as, you know, they didn't want to fight each other, they were happy where they were at. As we left, Hilda met us at the door, and as thanks for getting their kids, she handed me a pair of boots, apparently because I was the one that told her that her kids were back and fine and safe and everything's good and happy. So I took the boots, and we made our way to the inn. We ate and slept for the night before getting everyone up and 
rounded up and ready to head out to the next day's travel towards the comet. None of us knew which way the comet was really in the mountains, except Angu came up and was like, it's over there. Obviously. So we then followed Angu's lead, and uh, partway through, Largo de developed a bit of a headache. And we weren't sure what was going on there. So, you know, as we were going, Lorena then felt some rumbling underneath. And it apparently wasn't the food, but a bullet. So we, as we were stopped, the bullet came up, knocked some trees over, attacked us, bit the shit out of me. Was not a fan. Um... So we dispatched it. We were able to break off a few of the plates that the bullet had for plating on its uh, body. So we have some of that. We then decided to check out Largul. I couldn't seem to help with a bit of mending on the mind. So we took a look at the back of his neck and there was a faint glow. So I was shiny. With, yeah, with some approval on his part. I, with the assist of Angu and some guidance and some inspiration and all that fun stuff, managed to pluck and then heal up the wound, and I pulled out this tiny little sight crystal. It was just a little pink or purple crystal to me, but Largul has now hold of a little crystal that was in his neck that looked like it had been placed there from his previous holders, I should say because it looked like there was a previous incision that put the crystal in that place. So, upon continuing on our way, we saw these two really weird carrion crawlers. We dispatched them, and uh, we then... Uh, actually, Lorena saw this little gnome squidling thing, and her and Largo dispatched that. It was not happy that its carrion crawlers had died. It was very scared, and then died very quickly. So after that, um, Largul was a little torn up about what had been going on. He was coping with it not so well, but not too terribly. So we continued as long as he was good to go back to the crash site of where he had come from, he says. Uh, with his you know, acknowledgement that he's good to go, he's fine, and everything, we made our way. So he then told us a little bit about his past, about he crashed and, you know, made it to the Ten Towns before he froze to death. When we got there, we saw a ship that was intact and more of those squid-like creatures scavenging from the wrecked, ah, wrecked ship. Lorena asked Largo if it was okay to clear them out, and with uh, his agreement in the process, she uh, asked the rest of us, and with all of us in agreement, said that it's time to get to work. Alrighty. I don't think I agreed to it, but, you know, hey each their own. Uh, go ahead and roll. You don't have to agree to it. Oh, real high. Real high. <laughs> Advantage on ability check. Advantage on ability Could check. Could come in handy. Yeah, yeah. It's the first one of those I have right now. Yeah, I need to check mine. I have max damage on a hit. And I have an advantage on an attack roll. I need to remember I have those. I have none right now. Oh, you know what I didn't check? It's going to be fine. What? Oh, just the points. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, those, are, uh, those are set for the other games. But, yep, as of right now, I've got a reroll on an ability or save, a rebuild on an ability or advantage on a advantage. Hmm. Advantage on an advantage, because yes. There we go. I'm, now I have that fixed. So we so. left after rolling some stealth rolls. Uh, uh yes, we right? did roll stealth. Yeah. That or be rolled stealth upon getting there and seeing what we saw. Of course, I turn it on and look who spends three thousand five hundred points right off the bat. We all have disadvantage, by the way. That's okay. No, you know, as the DM, you're saying precedent for a DM in a game that you might play in to do the same thing, right? I just know last game it started off that way. I With have 108,000 points. <laughs> I can go all night long. Hey, DM has a disadvantage. It's not what she said. That's fine. Hey, takes time to get up to that ability. All right. 
Lots of practice. Anyway. So, <laughs> so I'll go ahead and use my disadvantage. All right. Did we already did the stealth checks? Okay. Uh, I did post the ring of mind shielding that Toby is wearing, if that matters. I posted that up there. I'll post again in case it matters to anything that's going to happen on your end. Um, I, will go, I will go ahead and use my disadvantage. There we go. Um, oh, are we on initiative now? Is that what we're doing? Well, that's what I'm rolling. I, I haven't said anything about initiative yet. I was saying, thank you. I had yet. I don't know. I use my disadvantage to see if this Karen Crawler happens to see y'all coming up. Oh, no. Hey, there we go. We rolled, some of us rolled pretty low, so that's pretty useful. Yes, because I ended up with seven. So right. he sees none of us because the lowest was a nine. Yep. Yep. So, what would y'all like to do? All right. Well, so I guess we're, uh... uh... Well, I mean... Sneak a little closer and see if we can... Try and scout, see what's what's going to be ahead, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So. I don't got much in the way of range, as you guys know, so... How big are these tentacles? Like, are they big enough to hide behind? Are they going to cause issues going over? Like... Uh, it will be kind of a rough terrain to climb over, but you can eat, so you hide behind them. Not a problem. Okay. As you get further down to the point, it will narrow. Mm -hmm. But think of them about the size of moving tree logs. All right. Big enough. Yeah. All right. Um, and are they moving still, or are they like crashed and dead and done? This one is still moving. The crashed one's over up at this area. All right. So before anything happens, um, Toby is going to reach over and uh, behind all this stuff, he is going to quietly on both of you cast Long Strider. It's not concentration. So you guys now have 10 extra feet of movement for the next hour. So you have more movement speed and I'll keep track of that. I don't think I need it because yeah. he's not going to give it to me. But yeah, as for difficult terrain, the big area right in here would be the difficult part. But when you get down to these smaller tentacles, as it gets started, you can basically step over. Okay. <clears throat> All right, well. Okay, I'm gonna practice I'm, I'm gonna reading lips. Here. Oh, you're just going. For, okay, all right. Okay, I'll move up all with right. you guys if uh, you are. I was going to be a little more cautious, but cool, uh, cool, cool. Sneaking, just set the tentacles. I'm not gonna climb over them. I'm gonna climb around them. Gonna sneak around them since the carrying crawler can't see us. Yep, I'm gonna get closer. And I'll. Do I hear anything coming off from where I can't see? Like, no. do I hear? More of them slinking around or crawling. I'm just kidding. What I'm trying to do is see if I can see any on the other side of the ship. You see, uh, well, not see, but you hear this low gruddling, gurling. That is a weird noise. I yeah, hear. it is. Yeah. That, yeah, I mean, hey, it makes perfect sense for those guys. You seeing those? low gurgling sound as can you see here? Yeah, I can yes. see. I can see. Okay. Alright, basically you're hearing the flesh golem carrying a low uh, crate with little pink crystals kind of sitting on top. If I focus my attention to this side, do I hear anything? Give me a perception check. I'll look at you and look that way and if you're trying to put an ear and I'll just say that I motion I just don't see anything that, that way that I can see personally 
I'm going to go ahead and use my disadvantage now. All right. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> so Still ten. a ten. <laughs> You're so thinking cute. you might be able to see better if you brought your head above the tentacle. <laughs> Me and Toby are also going to try and perceive that way. <laughs> okay. Because why not? Are y'all getting your... Y'all have your vision working, right? Yeah. Yeah, we can see... We can't see in this uh, block over here to the... To right, the this is blacked block. out. This is blacked out. Oh, okay. I thought that yeah. was... There is a block right here. Mm -hmm. that yeah all of this is just pitch black right okay let me see here a moment to pop up all up. See so some. everything from this square all of that is pitch black where I am at I cannot see around this which is not surprising but that's just my current field of view so Everything everything I have marked, I can't see. But the top part especially, it's just a square that is black. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why this isn't going to be you. Um, yeah. go, go to your map. Uh, go to dynamic lighting. You go to All dynamic right. lighting layer. And then, you okay. will, then do the whole drag the square thing. And highlight whatever line it is. It's blocking our view and delete it. Just make sure you don't go so far that you grab something else you, that we don't need to be seeing. Yeah. Um, when we fought these carrion crawlers last time, did they have any effect poison or anything when they bit us? That we can no. They just had the paralysis effect. Right. Okay. Uh, do you see the edge of the boat? Uh, I see the the carrion crawler and uh, another black area. Yeah, I see the tip of a circle, and then yeah, this carrion crawler. Okay, so I'll just delete this because that edge there is actually the second level. Yeah. Mm, gotcha. All right, we see everything except what what's right here. All right. So from what we know, it might be best to take out the little guys in the back because he seemed awful afraid when you guys saw him. You said that his worm things were dead. So maybe it'd be best to kill these guys first. Well, I mean, where you want me to shoot? I don't know how You're... this would work, but I'd like to cast press the digitation on the flesh column. That way he smells like rotting flesh. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Uh, you sure you want to do that? Yeah, it's just a little sensory thing or what direction. I, I mean, I don't stand up and do a whole bunch of dooby dooby dooby. It's just what is it? Um, but whisper and and point is all I'm doing and making it smell like uh, rotting flesh on the flesh column. Toby's going to tap you on the shoulder, Lorena, and give you guidance for the next minute for awesome. any ability yeah. check. So if we go into initiative, that's a D4. Well, speaking of that... I, I mean, the... I was doing this before you said anything. So, Lorena, guidance. Yeah, that's fine. Uh... Because for all of a sudden the odor changed on the flesh golem, so these guys are they're alert. But once again, I rolled the highest was a nine. So an overall group, I will say they don't know where you are, but they know something's up. No, yeah, it so. flesh golem just farted. Does a flesh golem have an asshole? Well, I don't know. I don't check. Maybe multiple somewhere. I mean, it might have one here, here, over there. Oh my god, buttholes for nipples! 
Sorry. <laughs> what, does it have mouths for teeth? Mouth I'm just thinking, you know, the next flesh golem will be, uh, what is that, Centipede Man or whatever? <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, so, yeah, I do that, thinking that maybe that might attract something else back at the Flesh Golem. Mm. Now you see him, he's, he's clueless, but he's actually heading back towards the front of or the ship here to right. deliver his load. And we'll say this guy's kind of mostly in that way. This guy is kind of mostly in that way. Yes, but do the carrion crawlers, are they attracted to him now that he smells so good? No, because they are kind of trained not to eat those right now. Okay, so I, I, s I see what you're trying to do. <laughs> now, this was, you know not a pet of their masters they might so but. are we gonna attack these guys or Toby says that to you guys alright yes. before that, before he moves then he would have let off a spell when they were all grouped together okay and what yeah. spell is that he was going to launch ice knife at the flesh column all right. So let me go ahead and 17 to hit the flesh golem, and let me pull up ice knife real quick. Does the 17 hit the flesh golem? Just barely. Okay, so that's going to be... That's not a disadvantage. That's a normal roll. Hopefully this goes through. Two piercing, and then I'm going to need a dexterity saving throw um, from each creature within five feet of the initial target. Uh, so the two little squiggling guys. Yeah, two little squidlings. Uh, mm -hmm. 14, because they are going to take... So, yeah. I got a 16. Okay. And an at 20. Both make it. Okay. So. Did it take half damage or what? I want to say that it was worth trying, but they don't take any because it says they must succeed or take 2d6. It doesn't say anything okay. about half damage. Oh, well. It was worth yeah. a shot. Well, now they know we're here. They know Toby's here. So, if no one else wanted to do a surprise oh, round, I mean, if I'm allowed to let do her off. A... Is that the thing that we're going to be allowed to do? Then yeah, I for sure want to do that. I would assume y'all were mm -hmm. timing this to okay, yeah, let's attack. Yes. Oh, we're doing the thi okay, sure, sure, sure. We're doing the um, thing. So there's mine. Um, all right. On who? Flesh Golem, since he's got everybody else around him. Uh, Con save. Uh, 24. That's one wow. of them. Wow. So they didn't see us, right? So we're hidden? Well. Yes. Advantage. Oh, oh Just well, checking. Toby would have had Ooh. another d20. Oh, hello, natural okay, yeah. 20 with sneak Ignore attack. That. All right, so everybody within the yellow circle there will have to uh, give a, a save, a, a constitution saving throw. Uh, 15 and a 6. And a Karen Crawler. Karen Crawler. 19. All right, so uh, those who made it can take 4. And those who didn't can take eight. Uh, thunder Yay. damage, if that matters. And then I will do my attacks after him, seeing who's still up and standing. Uh, but, 
Are all of them? Yeah, I'm sure they're all still up. All right. Then yeah. I will do two dart attacks. I'll just go ahead and roll this. Because these are at disadvantage but advantage, so straight rolls. So does an 11 or a 12 hit either of the squidlings? Oh, yes. Do shooting at the one that uh, <clears throat> I'm going to hit really this one hurt? and this one. Yeah, I'm going to throw a dart at both. One at both. Okay. All right. And so that's going to be... If they both hit, then let me roll the damage. They both hit. Okay, so it's going to be... Five for the first one. Let me see how that works. Oh, I'll say never mind. Okay, it didn't quite play nice, but whatever. Yeah, it's... Uh, so eight damage each. Eight damage each? Yep, because it's a monk weapon, and that's still rolling it with a D4 instead of my D6. All right. So eight per... Are you rolling it through... Uh... Roll twenty or D and D beyond. D and D. All but right. Yeah, um, even I though have they are my weapons. Just... Mm-hmm. I shot my crossbow. I crit um, on that. Did you? I did. I rolled a twenty. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's the thing that happened. Oof. It looks blue to me. What? It looks blue. I don't see green. And yet, there it is. Yeah, still, when green. you roll a max <laughs> max dice, even on cold damage, it turns blue. Hmm, interesting. Um, okay, so uh, my sneak attack, so that's 19 um, plus the criticals. So the total damage is 39. Against the squiggling? Okay. No, no, against the flesh column. Why drop a nuke on a squid? Yeah. Why are you picking on the hired hill? I'm not a nice human. Wait, um, I'm not a human. You're not. <laughs> you're okay. not a human. What's up? You may have to go in and change the dart on your own because it doesn't register as a monk weapon. Yeah, and that's what I saw, and I tried changing it. I might just have to make my own dart that I can change over time, because I've tried changing it before. Because I can't change the hit dice, the dice it rolls, but I can, like, add a number to it. And that's not really what... Nope. Or just do it in uh, roll 20, and that way when you throw your dart, just use roll 20 click. True, true. So, yep. You have guidance if you wanted to roll a d4 on your initiative. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Thank you. Oh, so, (laughs) 17... Okay, so I rolled low. Let me see that. Okay. Everybody rolled their thing. Yep, yeah, I got there. both of us in there. Oh, I need to roll for. I don't know. I guess you want your healer involved in this, huh? It'd be nice. It's a thing. Much appreciated if he was. Lisa, may we have some healing? Now let's. No, but he's got Order. disadvantage too. <laughs> yeah. Are you shitting me? No, no, you're the one that paid for it, so no, it's yeah. there. It's a thing. I just happened to notice all my uh, 
rolls or initiative. Oh, you're negative. <laughs> oh, you're negative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So apparently this is going to be walking apart. Yeah, before they even get to go. I mean, if the squidlings are dead, what are the carrion crawlers to do with this nice, smelly, tasty meal next to them? <laughs> now that they're not under the influence. No, 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 no. No? What are they? I have you no idea. You don't know if they've been drinking or not. I have no idea. I'm just giving you a hard time. <laughs> well, let me know what Toby's going to do. Oh, fuck. He's going first. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Uh, so he is just going to cave bear in Leroy Jenkins. All right. So he's cave bearing it to here to say hello to the flesh golem. Yellow friendly flesh golem. Yeah, he is a large creature, so he's taking up those four spaces, and he's a right. character. Yep, so a large beast. Can't smell, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Multi-attack. Yeah. Let's see if clicking this will do something interesting. No, it won't. I was hoping it would roll both attacks. So, Ronnie, if I kill you, I apologize. He doesn't mean it, though. <sighs> And then claws. So 22 for 11 piercing that is magical, and 21 for 14 slashing that is also magical. So 25 total. Correct. The golem uh, took 39 points of damage. Yeah, I got that. Along with the shatter and the two checking. points from the ice knife. Uh, just checking. Uh, uh, I got you. <laughs> Okay. But, yeah. uh, I can't have nice things. It's okay. Neither can we. As long as you know. That shield guardian? Yeah, no, we can't have nice things either. Okay. So I um was going to go right where he is, so that won't work now. Um so I'm gonna come up here. Um there's not a spot over here, but I would try to come flanking since I have long strider now. Um, am I able to stay there? It won't. Yeah, is that all right? Yeah. Okay, just making sure because technically it's off the map. Technically, no. I mean, I see a square there. All right. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit it. Okay. I is flanking, flanking. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a thing that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to be a 39, 39 points of damage to your carrion crawler. And as you pull your dagger out, you realize it broke. So you have no more <laughs> daggers. Oh, I have other daggers, just no more ice daggers. It's weird. I didn't think a magical item could break in him, but I guess I was wrong. I mean, if it's just going to keep freezing him from the inside out, I, That's, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Well, what was the total damage? 39. 39. Got to love them rogues in her sneak attack damage. Uh-huh. That. Hey, uh, that was nice. I didn't even put hex on him. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to put hex on him now? No, I'm saving my other spell slot. Thank you. I didn't say I was nice for you. I just said I was nice. Uh huh. What kind of warlock are you? Hmm. So what kind of lock are you? Oh, um, I know this answer because I know all of my things. Remember? It's been a while. I haven't I haven't leveled up. Uh, hexblade. I think you have hexblade's curse. That's not. I haven't activated it though. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't think it can't yeah, it's just a spell slot if I'm not mistaken. No, but I also have the spell hex, which gives me the one D six. Yeah, yeah that, one, that one just I know. Gives me additional three damage when Not I to mention it. you heal when he whenever whatever's hex mm -hmm. is killed. Yep. 
Oh, 12 AC on the beer. Okay. Well. 22. No. On the bear. On the bear? On the bear. And then 18. Mm-hmm. All right. You said he's a large creature, right? Correct. It is a large beast. Uh, seven and seven. And if I remember, uh, there's a con save, correct? Yes, he's... Roll to five. So he's poisoned for one minute. So the poison in the target is paralyzed. Mm-hmm. All right. That's not good. He's resistant if he was a Warforged, not a bear. Yeah. But he says he's a Warforged clockwork-type creature when he transforms. That's what I was thinking. You know, that's what he always called himself, so resistance would mean, what, he would have advantage on the save? Go ahead. <laughs> Alright, just a second. So, 18 plus 3. 18 plus 3? Oh, just a bit outside. On the good side, though, but outside. So you said that was 14 points of damage? Yes. Uh, who's up next? Largo? Yep. Yeah. I will. Okay. I will move forward. Oh, that's an action. Not paralyzed, just pissed off. Why? I only did fourteen points of damage. He's only got forty-two hit points. <laughs> and. You know what? Almost I'm, half uh, I'm gonna just like you know attack. I think I only get yeah. one attack. Yeah, I get only one attack per round. So it's okay. Just make it a good one. Do what I don't. I get advantage Shit. because he's in the way, or he's on the other side. Sorry, I'm on the phone. Fifteen I'll hit. In a minute. Sorry. Yes. All right. So looks like uh, fifteen would be the damage. To this guy. Yeah, this one right here. And let's see, what other actions can I do? Bonus action. Bardic inspiration, I think. Yep, unfortunately, I guess we didn't take a long rest before we did this. We did it short, but not long. Yep, so I have no Bardic inspiration. Oh. You used them all up from. I only get two. Traveling up here? I only get two. Mm hmm. Oh, that's right. You multi-class. Well, no. I mean, I think it's it's uh, skill-based. Yeah, versus my key points, which are level-based. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No problem. All right. Dreadbeck, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you hiding in these shadows? Oh, you're here. Uh, you'll go... Okay. Uh, did it move across or did you just move it from location A to location B? Location A to location B. Gotcha. I just saw something zip across is all. Just making sure it didn't <laughs> move. Yeah. It went down the stairs. Gotcha, gotcha. You. Um... <laughs> Oh, me. Um, uh, 10, 15, 20. Uh, oh, why am I getting here? Okay. Um, No, 
of hell. He will cast bless. Ooh. Yay. Tax and saves. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ain't he just the best? Yes. And that will be on... Three creatures. Sweet. Yes. That will be on Largo. Wampus and the Bear. <laughs> All right. Now it'll be on you three. Actually, are you within 30 feet of me? I'm... I think so. Yes. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah, he's the three of y'all. Okay. Rin. Which Rin? No, oh, you. Typhoid. Oh my god, I get to move 5, 10, 15, <laughs> 20 feet of movement to come say hi to this little guy. Mm hmm. And I'm gonna give him a couple of thwacks to start off my round. So that's gonna There's be. 20s though. Yeah. Okay, what the fuck, Chuck? Yeah, so we the first off, one. We played on D&D Beyond. Of course it's going to be poisoned, and of course it's going to get an extra hand of harm on that advantage roll, mm -hmm. because that's going to be another D6 on top of that. So that's 8 plus, that's 14, 23, 28, mm. 34, because the hand of harm crit. So 34 points mm -hmm. of damage. And it's poison, so it has disadvantage on attack throws. Mm hmm. And then, how's it looking? It's like still a, up. Like a worm. All right. I will, uh, er, I will go ahead and rake my claws across it. 15 <clears> hit. <throat> okay. For another six points of slashing. All right. That's me. That's sweet. Mm -hmm. Whatever. Oh, okay. You so get to it, go now. A whole bunch it of fell time. down, so I get to move more. Yeah, whatever. No, it falls on you. Well, don't be so yeah, happy. Go ahead. That sounded that sounded spiteful. Do just I have, so we're clear. I do have fifty feet of movement, so I can get because <clears throat> I moved twenty, so mm -hmm. I can get up to here and flank the flesh golem. Mm. Uh you're not quite oh, yeah. Fifty feet of movement. I moved twenty and that's thirty. And then mm -hmm. that will be me. Since it fell down dead. That's it? Okay. <laughs> Disregard. Disregard. Okay, let me roll a d6. Uh -huh. Okay. What did you do? I so said, just disregard. I'm checking something. 